Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Um, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value, and I'm gonna talk about investment opportunities and what I see coming up. Uh, on, my ch on the channel, I've done a lot of presentations. You can go back and look at those presentations. You can look at my playlist. Uh, I, I have investing series. I've got a whole bunch of, uh, of videos out there. What I see coming, coming up going forward is I see risk, I see opportunity, and I see uh, value in some areas. The value is in the commodities. The commodities, when you price commodities in relationship to anything else, uh, they're, they've never really been this cheap. I mean, they've been, we're talking 100 year lows. Uh, so they, they've never been this cheap in relationship to other assets. So that's, that's number one. On a ratio basis, commodities are cheap. Gold is cheap, silver is cheap, platinum is cheap. Those are all lumped into that commodity sector. So precious metals uh, and, and, and energy like oil uh, and uranium. Now, I've, I've been reading article after article. It seems like everyone wants to go straight into renewables. What I know about renewables is that they increase the cost of electricity. That's what we've seen in California. We've seen it in Germany. We've seen it in Norway. We've seen it in all these areas. Uh, there's no good way to store the energy from uh, renewables. And it seems like everyone is shying away from oil and, and, and natural gas and all of the fossil fuels and putting all their money and investments into a new world. This new world is going to have renewable uh, energy, uh, apparently. It's going to be wind, solar, all those types of things. Uh, and I'm not anti that. What I, I, what I do see is huge risks. I see very large risks to this new world. Uh, they just, it seems like, by reading all these articles, that everyone's just saying fossil fuels is out, renewables is in. And I can agree with that, but what are the risks? What are the risks that when you put the renewables in, it doesn't necessarily work the way that they want it to work? And if all the money's being drawn out of the stuff that we know that works, we could set up a scenario where we stop producing we know, of the things that we know that work. We shift it to something that is an unknown. And then that unknown risk or problem materializes. What, do you, what, what, what are we going to do at that point? Uh, how are we going to store energy if we have no way of storing that energy? How are we going to build all these batteries? I mean, it's not just building batteries. I mean, we need to build many, many, many batteries. And my, my thing is, why would we build all these batteries? That's kind of just a bunch of garbage. I mean, literally, it's garbage at some point. And then a battery you need to replace every seven years or so. So we're just going to continue to build these batteries every seven years. So I see that as a very large risk. Now, how would someone or, or how could a country de-risk its ability to create uh, renewable energy and power and, and, and all these things? That's what I'm interested in. And what gets me super interested is we've got these transition fuels. The transition fuels are oil and natural gas. Then we've got these, this kind of baseload power, which is uranium or nuclear, uh, nuclear energy. Nuclear energy, I think, has to be in this renewable mix. It has to. Uh, renewables are very hard to integrate into a, a, uh, a grid with its on-off uh, unstable power. And we need something to have this base, this base load stable power um, generation source. And nuclear is literally the only thing that I know of that can fit the bill for everything. So, uh, and, and we also ha have seen its use in some of these countries that have very high nuclear use, <clears throat> very stable, very cheap, very you know affordable uh, energy power generation. It's like the positive of everything. So if we have problems with the renewables of wind and solar, the, the, the cycling on and off, uh, their, their unsteady nature, their inability to store that power, uh, I think 
a really good play and given how cheap it is today is uranium like i i still am mulling over there is hardly anything that can challenge this type of asymmetric opportunity uh it is one extremely cheap in relationship to gold and gold's extremely cheap in relationship to the money supply and gold's cheap to the the stock market like dow s p 500 if you do all those ratios gold is cheap so if uranium is an anomaly cheap in relationship to to gold and we've got all this risk with the renewables in terms of wind and solar and it requires just massive amounts of batteries to be produced and they can't really produce baseload power and if we are drawing all the currency and money and investments from fossil fuels there's really only one spot left where money is going to have to just absolutely get like funnel into just massively and that's that's uranium that's nuclear energy and i i can't think of a scenario where they can do a renewable world without it I, 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 I'm just, I'm trying to think. Now, if you guys, if there's a way that, that you think that they can pull this off without having to put up a bunch of nuclear, put it in the comments section, please. I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts and opinions on this. But I, I can't think of, of, a, of a world where they, 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 where they can basically generate baseload power off of wind and solar. I just don't see it necessarily happening. And if the only spot that we have for generating baseload power with no emissions, carbon emissions, that is, is is nuclear, then nuclear, aka uranium, I mean, that could just be the best bet over the next 10 or 15 years of anything by a long shot. Now, there's if we go to this new world, we have to obviously interconnect everything. That requires copper. Uh, so that's obviously a, an, an incredible opportunity there. And then I also see silver as an incredible opportunity. And then platinum's working its way all over the place in a whole bunch of electronics uh, and things because of its superior exotic material properties. So I think all of those materials are probably going to be some of the best investment opportunities that I know of. Now, everything else is just, you're just playing off of these materials. You're shifting energy around. You're moving things around. It's all software related, maybe artificial intelligence. Uh, so that, all of those things is is just playing with the, the infrastructure. It's, it's making things more efficient. It doesn't generate power. It doesn't generate wealth. It doesn't generate something. You're just using things more efficiently, which is, which is great. Uh, and then when you start looking at other other investments, um, I, I just don't see the investments being as asymmetric as silver, platinum, copper, uh, nickel, and and uranium. Now another weird scenario. I'm I'm, I'm just kind of talk talking about investment opportunities here. <clears throat> Oil is like. No, it seems like nobody likes oil. And oil, everyone likes it as an end user. Uh, I see these electric cars, people, they're not, I'm not seeing a 90% uh, selling rate of electric vehicles right now. It's really low. It's, I don't even, I think it's like 10% or something like that, or maybe 20% at best. It's like 10%. People are not adopting electric vehicles. They're, they're continuing to buy uh, oil and gas vehicles oil um gasoline is what i mean by that like so they're gasoline diesel type vehicles and if if all the money's not going into investments in oil what is oil going to look like 10 years from now i mean it the 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 opportunity there it, it, it if everyone's drawing currency from from fossil fuels and investments there it's like they don't want to invest in it anymore uh, I, I just see this as a huge opportunity to be invested in oil uh, because I, if you look at the 
logical scenarios. You can't force people to buy something that they don't want to buy. If they want to buy it in, in, in gasoline and internal combustion engine, they're going to buy an internal combustion engine. I highly doubt that the majority of people who buy a car and the reason you're buying the car is because of its convenience. That's why you buy a car. It's very convenient. You go from A to B, done. Why are they going to go wait 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes to go charge their car? And if you have no charging stations at your workplace, I mean, and, and, and some of these homes, it's very expensive to, to charge a level two charging station and put it in your house and change the wiring and all that stuff. Some of, so a lot of this may not make sense. And then you've got the entire third world countries where they don't have the infrastructure to put in place either to, to put electric vehicles in. So I'm, I'm just trying to look at this entire world and say, we're going to need oil for a very long period of time. And if they screw this up enough, remember, we're all very first world centric, you know, like US based stuff. And that's where a lot of the investment money is at. If all that money doesn't go to fossil fuels, but the entire rest of the, you know, 90%, 95% of the world needs oil to run. I just see this as a huge opportunity uh, to, to, to invest some money into oil just to have some, you know, some exposure to it. Because if the electric vehicle stuff doesn't work, what are we back doing? We're burning oil again. Now, if all that investment money is not going into oil, where is it going to come from? Where is it going to come from? We have this proven awesome energy source and we don't know where it's going to come from. So if there's a risk, if something happens, I think oil oil is up there and I think uranium because I think that's where they're going to run if the renewable stuff doesn't pan out the way that they think it's going to pan out. So I think that's a, a very good opportunity. And it's cheap. It is dirt cheap. So what I'm doing with my money, and I'm looking out 10, 20, 30 years even, is I'm looking at uranium as one of the potential best plays that I that I know of uh, for investment opportunities. And I'll, I'll, I'll dive in a little bit about with some of the companies maybe in the next uh, video on how I, how I would set up that portfolio. So... That's, I just wanted to kind of talk this through, get you guys some investment opportunities. Uh, and again, if you guys want to learn more about all this stuff and ratio investing, look at my old videos. I've got a ton of things out there. Go ahead, take a look. Look at um, ratio investing. Look at some of the reasonings of why I think a commodity boom's coming. You can look at some of the ratios of stocks to commodities and how they're at 100-year lows. 100-year lows. So. Thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.